So today we're going to be looking at how to create a foreign key using the PHP MyAdmin tool. So we've already got into our database right here and we've created a quick little sample database so we can test this out here in class. As you can see we have a schools database with a students table and a teachers table. Looking first at our teachers table we have in our structure we have a ID as a primary key already defined with a reference to a name, content area, and room as its data members or its uh, properties or fields inside that table. On the students table, we have the structure where we have an ID, a name, a grade, and a homeroom teacher. We can see right here that we are creating a reference from the students table to the teachers table with that name of homeroom teacher. In order to create that reference, there are a couple things we have to do. The first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we have an index for that ta the table we're actually starting off with, aka the students table. Now since I've already created this table, I have to actually add that index. Now to do so, using the structure of phpMyAdmin, I go over here, I find the, the field that I'm going to be working with. I go over on the right until I see where it says index, and I click that link. It brings up the lovely message in SQL saying, hey, are you sure you really want to do this? Do you want to add an um, index called homeroom teacher to the students table? And yes, we do. We, of course, will say yes on this one. And we say okay. And that gives us now a reference. We've actually added an index to this table called homeroom teacher. So we have that reference to it. So this table now has the ability to potentially refer to other components of our database. The next step we have to do when creating a foreign key is we have to actually build that reference to it. In order to do that, we have to follow a couple of uh, movements. We go over here in our structure tab. We find our relation view button. We click on it. On the relation view link, we get to this screen right here. And on the left-hand side, we have internal relationships. This is not what we're working on. We're dealing with a standard foreign key, so we're going to completely ignore that for right now. When we want to create a foreign key to another table, we go over to the foreign key constraints section, not at the ID, but where we now have defined an index. If you notice, it already has schools specified as the database we'll be working with. In our table, we want to refer now to our teacher's table. And once we select the teacher's table, we'll then provide a list of all the indices that belong to that table. And so far, we only have our primary index or our primary key, the ID. Once we've selected that, it then pops up a couple options we need to be able to specify. We first have a constraint name, then the on delete and on update. The constraint name is a way we identify that this is a constraint for the database. A common way of naming that is to actually specify that it's a foreign key for the table. And so in the case of what we're going to use right here, I will call this the students teacher underscore FK. So FK is the standard abbreviation for foreign key, and it's referring from students to teacher. And with this, we're going to have um, an on delete and an on update action. Specifically, am I on delete? I'm going to choose to set it for no action where it will not have any reference to it because we've already specified and we structured our table that the homeroom teacher option does not have the ability to be null. So otherwise we'd normally set that for not null. But since it's an int, we're just going to leave it for no action. However, on update, I want to choose cascade. The cascade option will allow me to automatically change any associated values with that. This becomes especially important as we build bigger projects so you can make changes going on down the line all for you. So again, we went to our structure tab, we clicked on the relation view um, link, it brings us to the screen where we specify the database, the table, and then the field, the ID that we're using is the actual foreign key for this. We gave it a name, we put FK as the um, suffix of that name, indicating that it is a foreign key. We chose no action for delete, but cascade for update, and we hit save. We then see that we have a result saying it executed successfully. And the structure that it does is it alters the table. Which table did it alter? It altered our student's table. By doing so, it added a constraint called student's teacher foreign key, which is a foreign key constraint on homeroom teacher, which references schools.teacher, the ID field. And then again, just like we did in programming land, the dot operator is what allows you to go inside from the database to the table to the field. And so we have that same structure happening in database land as we did inside Java land. And so we have that alter table happen right here. We now go ahead and go over to our browse feature. And we have a reference here. We already have a student name. 
And we have a reference from there. We can click on that. It's now a hyperlinked value. I click on it, and it will automatically refer to the other table's value, which is a value of 2. In this case, the Har Leslie Harper's class for hardware networking in room 203. So we have that structure right there. This constraint requires us from now on that everything we put in for this value will have to have a number that will match inside the key for that has a foreign key field. So if I go to insert, and we'll put Jose Escobar, and Jose Escobar will teach um, algorithms, and his room will be 205. No biggie. I added a new teacher to my table. No big deal. So I'm going to go back over to my database schools, choose my students table. Again, my students table, I only have that one student. I'm going to go ahead and add a student to that. And it will add a new student. And this student will be student blank, last name. And their grade will put them in negative 6, because it's completely just a test right here. But notice how that my insert value right here, I have a drop-down menu. I can only put values that already exist inside my teacher's table. I can put teacher 1, 2, 3, or 4 in there. I hit go. I've inserted that teacher in there. With that, I go look at my browse, and I go to there, and blank last name also has a homeroom teacher of two. I can edit that, go change that. Oh, I still have two in there. I can get it to four. I hit go, and I'll have now blank last name has grade negative six, homeroom teacher of four. I click on four. It'll take me to the other table, which is Jose Escobar teaching the algorithms course. We have the ability then to immediately reference that. We can't put in invalid options when we have a foreign key. We can only put in values that already exist in the other databases, other table on that database. So again, to make that happen, we go to the structure tab. We pick the table that we want to um, have the foreign key in. In this case, we went to the students table. We chose the structure tab on there. We added an index to the field that we wanted to have that foreign key refer to. In this case, it was homeroom teacher. We then went to the relation view. On the relation view, we specify that it's a foreign key on the school's teacher's database, or school's database, the teacher's table, referring to the ID column, which is the primary key of that table. We chose for no action cascade. We hit save, which now has a link on that where we can see we have a reference of homeroom teacher that if we look at our browsed values, excuse me, that we select all from students, we can see that Michael Greenleaf is in two, blank last name is in four, and that blank last name allows us to choose teacher number four, and find out that's Jose Escobar teaching the algorithms course. So we have the ability to actually refer to this other table. I can only put values that exist in there. When I try and actually insert a value, I can't put a value that doesn't work for, excuse me, go to my browse of schools, go to my students tab, I go to insert in students. I can't insert a, a teacher that doesn't exist. I can't put in a brand new teacher. So when you have a foreign key, it's required that if you want to add a new value to be using later, you have to add that new value to the foreign keyed table first. In this case, you have to add to the teacher's table before you add to the student's table. So if you hire a new teacher, you have to create a new entry in the teacher's table before you can add new students to that teacher.